from me, I bear <laughs> <laughs> Care of that crate. Holding and O'Day release the cargo container number 6A restraining clamp. Lombardi, you complete the transfer of paperwork. You three check to make sure that all the clamps are secure for transfer. Kaplan, why don't you ride with me? Cut, Kaplan. Interplanetary cargo shipping is a dangerous business. These rules are for your safety. Long hair interferes with the helmets, just as the wearing of jewelry endangers the bio suits. Don't worry about her, Scheidel. She knows the rules. In fact, she never met one she didn't like. I bet if the corporation told her to shave her head, she'd do it. I wasn't talking to you, McNeil. Be gentle with him. He's a victim of defective DNA, totally incapable of taking anything seriously. Well, I take this crate seriously.
Hi, Barra. Haven't you been fired yet? It would take a bigger man than you, Shidel. Shoshone, this is Warren Shidel, director of crew management for the Solar System Shipping Corporation. Yes, Mr. Shidel. Welcome back on board. Shoshone, how many times has crew member Adam Ibera been written up for company rule infractions over the past year? 29 infractions are indicated in crew member Ibera's file. So one more, say for insubordination, would be enough to terminate you for good. I've been working for this company for 18 years, which means a triple S would have to pay me a big fat severance package. So why don't you do me a favor? Fire me. I could use the money. Go to the hold. All of you. We've got at least two loads to take down to the surface. Kaplan and I can handle things here. All right, Kaplan. Let's go over those semaphore errors that you logged on startup programming. Right. What about this? That's the new pump for the water recycler. As I was saying, the semaphore logbook error... It goes back error. down in the engine room. Where else would it go? Okay, now, the thing I want to talk about, the thing I want to stress, the thing I want to see again... Transfer of vehicle 156, it's a triple S-17. You ready for the last load? Affirmative 17, our spear catcher is ready when yours is. Okay, they're shaking hands. They're synced. Here she comes. B team, you have your additional duties and you know the anticipated obstacles. Per usual, the two crew members with least seniority will remain on board. Who is that? All right. Now, before you're released, I have something to say. Oh, goody. The speech. I will make this simple, childishly simple, so that even Ibera can follow it. You are employees of Triple S. Your behavior reflects on Triple S. Drunken carousing is a bad reflection. Sober recreation is a good reflection. And staying in company quarters aids greatly in achieving the latter. That is why we provide them at minimal cost. Sorry, I already have a hotel reservation. Of course, if you prefer wasting your salaries on luxury hotels. There's a luxury hotel in Titan? <laughs> Kaplan here will be staying in company quarters, I'm sure. Yes, sir. They're economical and convenient, so. Triple S appreciates your attitude. Moving on. I've been asked to reiterate company policy forbidding sexual relations between space-based personnel. As you well know, it leads to problems aboard ship and disrupts business. If you can't keep your pants on for the day and night you're on the surface, there are plenty of miners and triple S ground-based personnel to accommodate you. Make use of them. You, you, and you get your hair cut. How can you stand those company quarters? Well, Theta assumes that if she's a cooperative little peon, that she'll get Shido's job. I don't want Shido's job. I want his boss's job. Well, that's it, Titan. I have to meet with someone down the quarters, so I'll walk you down. Great. Thanks. Okay. Hey, see it stutters tonight? Yes, I'll be there. Hey, you don't think that those two are, you know... No way. Oh, get your head out of the gutter, Chris. Oh, God, you don't really think they could be. Just asking. Shidel wouldn't know what to do with a woman if she came to detailed map and instructions. Yeah, but you would, wouldn't you, sweetheart? <laughs> I've broken a few hearts in the day. Yeah, you're breaking mine, Ibarra. Barbershop? Barbershop. You missed a spot.
don't try to help me jealous. Said she wasn't interested. Triple S snobs. Theta, hey. How's Shidel? How would I know? So, what were you doing all day? Doing? Or something to do here? Yeah. Titan's such a bore. I mean, nothing to see, nothing to buy. It's such beautiful scenery. Cobalt mines are so lovely this time of the year. Hey, Triple S. Uh, can I talk to you? Of course, you can. We're very friendly. I've heard that. Uh, here's my situation. Um, I've had it with mine. I need to find a new way to make a living. And you think that hauling freeze-dried pork chops and mining machinery to Titan, and then a load of rocks back to Mars would be more desirable? Well, so it's only long-haul truck driving. It's got to beat working the mines. Poisonous gases and explosions. Right, but how do you feel about spending most of your life in hypersleep? They put you in hyper? Why? Because Triple S invented cheap. Eight of us are always in hyper shifts. Only two are on duty. Saves the company on food and housing. Two months of boring paperwork. Eight months of sleeping. And then it's uh, one day of unloading and loading, one night of shore leave, and it's back we go. You guys ship out that fast? Tomorrow morning. You gotta get the cobalt back to Mars. Hyper does have one nice little side effect, however. What? It slows down the aging process and makes us look years younger than we are. Besides, I'd go crazy if I had to be awake for the whole <sighs> 10 months. Oh, I thought the trip was one long party. <laughs> Triple S rule number five, no sex aboard ship. Triple S rule number nine, no booze on board. That's my uh, personal favorite. Yeah, but I heard you got no captain either. No corporate clown telling you what to do every minute. No. Just bonehead company reps at either end of the trip, supervising the loading and the unloading, getting paid twice what we do. Here it comes. Someday. Someday I'll get even with them. I'll jettison their precious cargo all over the galaxy. And with that, he will now pass out. Why don't I buy you a drink to make up for the bad news? Just how old are you? <laughs> well, when Jenowitz passes out, it means it's time for bed. We'll see you all at load up. What took you so long? I was trying to convince Ibarra not to sneak alcohol on board. <laughs> Come on, give the guy a break. The only friends he has in life are his bottle and me. I know, but if he gets caught breaking the rules, we'll all pay for it. <laughs> well, uh, isn't that a little hypocritical, preaching to Ibarra, and you and I are here committing one of the company's cardinal sins? Why do you think I'm doing that? Well, because I'm the best you ever had, and you can't get enough of me. <laughs> no, seriously. Why do you think I'm willing to risk so much to be with you? Because we don't play mind games. There's no BS. And we can't stand the thought of going to sleep for such a long time without being able to see each other. It's a great answer. Yeah, but the real answer is, uh, I'm the best you ever had. You can't get enough of me. two hours before the transport leaves. Good. Yeah. I thought we'd make good use of our time. Well, you want to get some breakfast? <laughs> oh, 
hide. Hey. <laughs> Listen, uh, I lost my shirt in the game last night, and I was kind of wondering if you could uh, cover the hotel bill. I mean, I'll pay you back when I get back to Mars. Yeah, sure, okay. Yeah, look, I'll see you load up, okay? Don't worry about your room. I'll take care of it. Yeah, and the wall you split early last night, uh, the only thing I got to wake up with was a hangover, so, uh, is she cute? Come on, have I met her? I never kiss and tell, Ibarra, especially when there's a husband involved. Oh, executive's wife. It's naughty. <laughs> Go away before I change my mind about the loan. So you fooling around with married women now? Yeah, well, for thinking on my feet, I thought it was pretty clever. Yeah. You're clever enough to get us on the same shift next trip. <laughs> Why don't you let me do that? It's my turn. Yeah, but I'm pulling seniority on you, Ballard. See, I love to control people's destinies, and this is the only chance I ever get, so here. It's all yours, McNeil. Ladies and gentlemen, the deal. Who gets to work? Who gets to sleep? Here come the cards. Read them, and we... Last shift. First shift. We were together two shifts ago. Now, isn't that double jeopardy or something? <laughs> well, have fun, Odbara. You can finish teaching me to play Sidonian crabs. Second shift would be me and Kaplan. Third shift. Fourth shift. Would you believe how lucky we got with that draw? You've always been good with your hands. I like the second shifts. Mm -hmm. Listen, Shadal came to see me before the load this morning. Uh, did he pat you on the head and give you a gold star? No. He said there's a job opening for a computer systems analyst on Mars. Congratulations, are you gonna take it? It's what I've been after. Oh. And answer the question. Yeah, I think I am. But I was thinking maybe you could get a job there too. I don't know, we could get a place together. We'll have plenty of time to talk about it after hypersleep. You got it. Every time I get into one of these coffins, I wonder if I'm ever going to wake up. Sweet dreams. Shoshone, they're all tucked in. Fire them up and set the clocks. Yes, Adam. Now activating the hypersleep chambers. I'm doing the log this time. I thought you hated that. No, I hate other things, but what I really oh, like is taking your money.
hypersleep sequence complete. Initiating recovery phase. Christopher McNeil in chamber number six and Theta Kaplan in chamber number seven. Reporting normal body temperatures, respiration, and heart rate. Recommended analeptic dosage, 60 milligrams per person. Mm. for recovery. I don't know. Should be. I need a shower. Chris! Get dressed. We have a problem. You take quarters of master control. I'll take the wrecking tech rooms. Hypersleep. 348 days, which is 10 months past your originally scheduled shift. Central operations on computer requests. Shoney's been totally blinded. Yeah, I saw that. All the cameras are down and all the lights are off. I bear and Jenna was trashed They're the place. They're dead. What? Shoshone can stall the tech body heat other than me and you. And the sleepers, there isn't any. That's the beginning. It's not two months later. It's a year later. What? Shoshone confirmed. External comm system is out. Our fuel, 98% consumed. We're terminally off course here. We are not near Mars or any destination. Chris, we're above the ecliptic. Shoshone, why was the course changed? I don't know. Who changed it? Omar Janowitz. Why? I don't know. What's wrong with the external comm? It's been detached from the exterior antenna. I didn't see who did it. The entire video system, parts of which had already failed, went offline just prior to that. When did these things happen? Days 52 and 53 of the voyage. Why didn't you wake us up sooner? Someone deactivated the hypersleep chambers. I immediately reactivated them, at which point they defaulted to their 365-day limit. No, that's not default. Shoshone, the program default requires you to take full program control and awaken all sleepers immediately. It's in your coding. Line 77,922 through line 78,615 were commented out in the last software update. Oh, my God. What's she saying? The company was trying to save money on false alarms. They eliminated her ability to wake us up in a situation like this. Because the fuel is nearly depleted and we're approaching no destination, I woke you and Chris early because you were the next scheduled shift. It looks like this is it. Are we still in hyper? Are we still dreaming here?
I've determined the nearest habitation. It's the space station Gulliver, which was established as a potential launch point for exploration outside the solar system. Neptune? Yes. How long will it take for the message to get there? One hour and three minutes. Theta. We're ready. This is freighter number 17 of the Triple S Corporation calling Space Station Gulliver. We assume that we've been listed as missing and any search for us ended months ago. Please note the simultaneous transmission of our location. We were awakened from hypersleep less than an hour ago. We have no idea the circumstances that led to our present situation. We will investigate and leave behind a report detailing anything we discover. For all practical purposes, there is no fuel left. In addition to us, there are six sleepers on board. Their chambers will be drained of any life support in exactly nine hours and 20 minutes. After much soul searching, we've decided the most humane thing to do is to spare the sleepers the knowledge of our situation. So with our computer's permission, when the chambers cease operation, we will leave them inside and let them die in their sleep. We hope our decision will be understood and forgiven. Crew members Adam Ibarra of Panama City, Florida, and Omar Janowitz of Red Cloud, Nebraska, are missing and must be presumed dead. For the families of the others, we will verify all crew members on board. Leilani Griffin, Champaign, Illinois. Hunt Ballard, Levittown, New York. Ellie Follett, Yuma, Arizona. Mara Leonardi, New Richmond, U.S. Mars. Rupert O'Day, Hampton, Virginia. Yvonne Hoving, New Houston, U.S. Mars. I'm Theta Kaplan, and in case we don't make it home, I'd like to say goodbye to my family in Los Angeles. Brianna, please take good care of Mom and Dad. You're all they have now. I love you all very much. I'm Christopher McNeil from New Houston, Mars. Dad, I know I promised you nothing would ever happen to me out here. I really hate letting you down like this. I'm sorry we never got to make that trip to Phobos Canyon. I know you're looking forward to it. So was I. Tell Mom I love her. Goodbye. Gulliver, please confirm reception of this transmission. Triple S 17 out. They don't want the time comes. I don't want to talk about that right now. We're still alive. There's got to be a way out of this. I'm open to suggestions. We need to find out what happened here eight months ago. Where do we start? What was going on? Check the lockers. There's nothing. Shoshone wrote it. <laughs> the only person I know who can make light of this situation. Yeah, well, stick with me, we'll die laughing. Shoshone, playback traffic. Number 17 to Triple S, Com Central with the duty roster first shift. All present and accounted for. Our flight path is just fine. All instruments are Stop operating playback. normally. Fast forward to the first transmission indicating a problem, if any. This is Triple S Com Central calling number 17. Why haven't you made your daily report? Please respond. This is Triple S Com Central calling number 17 again. Why aren't you answering? 
Ibarra, Janowitz, respond immediately. This is Solar System Shipping Communications Central in New Houston calling number 17's computer. Shoshani, what the hell is going on? That must be when the antenna was pulled. Shoshani, play back the logs. It's not everything, just anything that seemed unusual. I can't make judgments as to what constitutes unusual versus usual human behavior. I know, I know. You can't speak until spoken to. Shoshani, please play the last two or three entries. Two or three? Three. I picked up a blooper today on the long range, but they wouldn't answer my call. Uh, probably smugglers. It was, uh, Shannon, which is birthday today, and uh, I made him popcorn, and uh, we played Sidonian craps. I let him win. No, he didn't. <laughs> Cooking duty for two weeks. It's great. Uh, spotted some space junk today. Uh, Janowitz will be going out tomorrow to collect it. it should be a one-man operation. Last about one hour. Shoshone, did Janowitz go outside? Yes. Did he come back? Yes. Did he bring the space junk with him? Yes. What was it? I don't know. I never had an unobscured view of it, and it wasn't presented to me for analysis. Where is it now? Unknown. My video system failed soon after it was brought on board. This is freighter number 17 of the Triple S Corporation calling Space Station Gulliver. We assume that we've been listed as missing and any search for us ended months ago. Please note the simultaneous transmission. Is it really Triple S 17? We were awakened from hypersleep less than an hour ago. We have no idea the circumstances that led to our present situation. We will I don't investigate believe it. And we'll <laughs> They're above the ecliptic. In addition to us, number 17 is carrying six sleepers. Their chambers will be drained of life support in exactly nine hours and 20 minutes. After much soul it would take six months to reach them. How could they have ended so far off course? Wait. Uh, didn't we receive a telemetry download last month from a research vessel on that side of the ecliptic? Yes. Here it is. The dolphin. A scientific expedition. Do you remember what they were doing? Uh, tracking a comet, I think. Somewhere up here. Shoshone, open elevator number one, topside. Elevator number one is not functioning. I don't care. Open it anyways. I borrowed Genoa's to be in there. They're in there. I know it. I don't think I want to see it. You don't have to. I'll do it. Shoshone, close elevator number one, topside. Shoshone, open elevator one downside. It didn't open all the way. Try again. As I explained previously, elevator number one is not functioning. I drive you crazy, don't I, Shoshone? That's not possible. If it were, however, I'm certain you'd be the one to accomplish it, Chris. I'm flattered. Are you just programmed to say that? I'm programmed. Don't answer it. Nobody home. 
Hi, Byron Jenna. What's the space junk? Should be around here somewhere. You look for that, I'll look for them. Ibarra. I guess we can assume this wasn't an accident. It wasn't suicide either. Look at the way he's wrapped in that tether. The Janowitz put him in the lock without a suit and then deliberately opened the outside door? Flushed him. Why? What's that? It's here, too. Oh I'll just have Shoshone analyze it. It's about time for the Gulliver's reply. What are we gonna do with him? Leave him here. Are you okay? Did it just get really warm in here? Yeah, I noticed that too. Good, I thought it was just me. Aren't they calling back? Yeah, what does it matter anyways? There's nothing they can do to help. This is Space Station Gulliver calling Triple S-17. Apologize for the delay in our response, but in trying to assess the situation. Listen, I um, don't want to give you false hope, but there's supposed to be a research vessel named the Dolphin tracking a comet near you. If we did succeed in reaching them, they should be contacting you not too long after you receive this transmission. Please, let us know the outcome. Everyone here is hoping the dolphins out there and that they can get to you before the sleepers terminate. Oliver out. Why is he so worried about the sleepers? They don't know what's going on. What are you doing? I'm not waiting anymore is what I'm doing. Ah. Not for a call, it's not gonna come from a ship that's not out there. Yeah, well, it could be, and you need to be here to talk to them. No. I'm taking this to the tech room to get it analyzed, and I'm searching the cargo hold for Janowitz, because it's the only place left. You're not going anywhere until that call comes. Let go of me. Let go. Research Explorer Dolphin calling Solar System Shipping Transport number 17. Why aren't they answering? Our view of the situation they're in, the possibilities are infinite. Triple S 17. Chris McNeil, I'm Rogine Page, commanding the Research Explorer Dolphin. Please state your present condition and situation. Okay, uh, I'm about to die, and so is everybody else in this floating warehouse. Not if we can do anything about it. Just get your asses out here. That's a constructive remark. Mr. McNeil, let's discuss trajectories and potential rendezvous points. Discuss them with our computer. She likes unsolvable problems. Perhaps we should reconsider aborting our project and sacrificing six months research. This is the Explorer Dolphin, calling Solar System shipping number 17's computer. the chance of them reaching us is slim. 
Why are you wasting your time? It's not like that blue crap's gonna refuel the ship and get us home. Maybe not, but if I'm gonna die, I'd like to know how and why. Or is that too deep a concept for you to grasp? What the hell is that? Must be Jenna, it's a space jump. What do you know? Don't touch it, don't touch it. Whoa, I'm not liking this. Janowitz is such an idiot for bringing that thing inside. It's probably what killed him, what's killing us. What are you doing? I have to search the cargo hold for Janowitz. Even if he's dead, I'll answer some more questions. I'll come on with you. I think I can handle it myself. You'll just use up any external air supply we have left. Yeah, well, we're already dead. What difference does that make? Dolphin is coming. You're dreaming. I'm not giving up yet. Shoshone, activate the cargo hold lock. What's wrong with this damn thing? Why is it so slow? You're dragging it, Shoshone. The lock is operating normally. Decompression sequence complete. Shoshone, activate the track vehicle. The track vehicle is not functioning. Damn ship, nothing works. I bet he came in here to do what he threatened to do a thousand times before. Jettison the cargo. Why did he depressurize? Maybe because he didn't have you to tell him how to put on his suit. What are you babbling about? That is your specialty, isn't it? Telling everybody how to live their lives? Stata knows best for everybody.
Activate the cargo hold lock, B side. The cargo hold lock is occupied and cycling. Open the damn door! The cargo hold lock is occupied and cycling. <laughs> the calculations again, Lyra. He's already done them twice. Conclusion. The orbital trajectory change required to rendezvous with number 17 before the hypersleep chambers fail will completely expend our primary fuel. Factor in the reserve fuel. I don't think that's a wise suggestion. Just what is your problem? There are eight human beings out there still alive, and as long as there's a chance of us reaching them in time, we are not giving up. May I speak freely? I don't think anyone could stop you, Mr. Icorn. We spent three years preparing for this expedition, another six months getting out here. Now, you're suggesting we throw away the scientific opportunity of a lifetime and risk our lives for some people who, by their own admission, are already dead. We have a moral and legal obligation to attempt a rescue. Only if it does not endanger this ship and its crew. I'm not dying in a useless attempt to save a bunch of strangers. You are also not in command of this mission. Lyra, factor in the reserve fuel. Conclusion. Factoring in the reserve fuel will be able to rendezvous on schedule. However, it will not then be possible to sustain this crew and eight additional people for the length of time needed to arrive at the nearest habitation. Making the whole thing pointless. I'm stronger and I'm smarter. Just give me the knife. <laughs> uh. Shoshone, open the rec room door. Now. Automatic controls have been damaged, Chris. You must use manual override. Shoshone, where's Theta? I'm reading body heat in the crew corridor. That's me, stupid. And at the side of the cargo lock. Chris, primary fuel level has only seven hours remaining. 
The hypersleep chamber life support systems are dangerously low. is detecting an obstacle and won't close. I don't care! Open the lock! I can't do that, Chris. It would expose the crew area of the ship to vacuum. Oh, I hate you! I don't understand. She doesn't understand. She doesn't understand! She doesn't understand! She doesn't understand! Backup thermal cells in all utility cabinets. I know that. Okay. I repeat, this is Research Explorer Dolphin calling Solar System Shipping Transport Number 17. They refuse to answer. This is the Dolphin calling Number 17's computer, Shoshone. Why aren't McNeil and Kaplan responding? They aren't in master control. Where are they? The video system is offline, but from body heat readings and my last communication with McNeil, I conclude that he is in the engine room and that Kaplan is in the cargo hold. Are the sleepers all right? Yes. Shoshone, I need you to call McNeil and Kaplan to master control. We have a problem. Theta, this is an emergency. Please engage the secondary external communication system and speak with the dolphin. Chris, this is an emergency. Can you hear me? The dolphin needs you in master control. There are some serious concerns with regards to our rendezvous. Shut up! I'm sorry. Kaplan and McNeil aren't accepting my call. Are you sure they're still alive? Yes, although the current body heat reading from Kaplan is dangerously low. Thank you, Shoshone. Dolphin out. Shouldn't you concede? Stop. I do not want to hear it. Chris, I know that must be you who's deactivating the hypersleep chambers. You don't have my permission for this action. Please cease immediately. Activating chamber number eight. No! Activating chamber number one. No! Two, three, no! four, five. No! Later, this is Shoshone. Are you still having problems with your thermocell? I'm detecting temperature fluctuations in your biosuit.
Shoni, activate the cargo hold lock and tell me where Chris is. He's in the rec room. Chris has been interfering with the operation of the hypersleep chambers. He's trying to kill the sleepers. Why would Chris do that? No, never mind. It wouldn't do any good to explain it to you now. Shoni, the blue stuff I gave you to analyze, what is that? It's degraded human blood fused with a biological agent that I can't identify. Repressurization complete. Shoshone, is the bioagent sample, is that still in the analyzer? Yes, Theta. I think Chris and I have been infected with it. Cold temperatures seem to counteract its effects. Conduct the thermal test and confirm, please. The bioagent is most active at normal human body temperature. Temperatures below that appear to retard its ability to function. I would suggest panicide, as there are no known bacterial or viral classifications immune to its effects. Chambers with this. Come on. We were trying to kill each other. Chris, we're sick. Look. What's the blue stuff we found? It's my blood. We've been infected with some bioagent that makes us homicidal. Cold suppresses it, and the panicide seems to kill it. It must have come from Janowitz's space junk. That may be where it started where Ibarra and Jenna would scout it, but we were sick before we found that thing. Then where? Ibarra's body. It's contagious. The sleepers. I was all over their chambers. The readings look normal. So do they. Whatever it is must not have penetrated the chambers. Shoshone, scan the exterior of the hypersleep chambers for any evidence of the unknown bioagent. Neither the unidentified biological agent nor any other contaminant is present. If it lived on non-organic surfaces, the whole ship would be toxic. Let's contact the dolphin. Let's see what time our rag gets here.
Have you had enough time now to apply reason to this situation? Yes. The rescue of Triple S-17 is impossible. As of this moment, the mission is at an end. This is Research Explorer Dolphin calling Solar System Shipping Transport number 17. This is Shoshone. Shoshone, we've reached a decision and I felt you should be informed. What decision is that? You're there. Uh, why weren't we able to contact you earlier? We ran into a new problem, but it's been fixed. What decision did you reach? The technical obstacles proved insurmountable. We called off the rescue operation. I considered everything, please believe me, up to and including making use of your lifeboats. They don't have the range. No, they don't. You know what the spear catcher is? I think he's talking about a dynamobilizer. The electromagnetic device you use to transfer freight. Yes. Theta could get our computers talking to each other. Let them calculate the required trajectories. Then I could tap into whatever fuel we have left, reposition ourselves, and release the cargo without using the compensating thrusters. Which would propel you to a new rendezvous point. Yes. So we're going to try this? <laughs> yeah. We're going to try it. What cargo are you carrying? Cobalt ore. Cobalt. Triple S isn't likely to appreciate having such expensive cargo dumped into space. Believe me, Mr. What's your name? Icorn. Believe me, Mr. Icorn, Triple S collected the insurance on this cargo a long time ago. We'll get back to you from the hold. Out. There's something I really like about that guy. What the hell could that be? He's not in charge. Open cargo bay doors. Cargo bay doors opening. Release container restraining clamps. Restraining clamps released. Dynamobilizer at maximum thrust. Dynamobilizer at maximum. Bypass compensating thrusters. Compensating thrusters off. Shoshone, confirm trajectory settings. Trajectory settings are correct, Chris. All safety's off, all systems green. All safety's off. All systems green. You must be careful to balance the load, or you'll go into a spin. We do this for a living, Icorn. This is for Janowitz. Shoshone says we'll rendezvous with 25 minutes left on the hypersleep clocks. Will you wake the sleepers now? Yeah. Won't they be surprised? When we rendezvous, we'll transport over to you in the lifeboats. Before we switch off, I'd like to hear a little bit more about the new problem that you encountered. You didn't explain. There wasn't time before. The first shift brought a piece of space junk inside. Space junk? Would you elaborate? It may be contaminated. Contaminated? With some kind of infectious bioagent, but we killed it with panicide. We can't take infected people on board. Nobody's infected, not anymore. And the sleepers were never exposed. Tell me more about this space junk. Well, it looks like a piece of man-made machinery, but it's not. It's... it's alien. Alien? What would a couple of Teamsters know about alien anything? I want to see this. No, we're not going near it again. If you want to see it, you can come inside when we meet. That is, if we are meeting. If you're 100% sure you're free of contamination. Yes. We're meeting. Thank you. Let's go wake the sleepers. Triple S-17 out. What would a couple of Teamsters know? You must be careful to balance the load, or you'll go into a spin. We're being rescued by a moron. Yeah, but we are being rescued thanks to you. Yeah, that's my survival instinct. And right now it's telling me that I don't want to take another trip through space for a very long time. Settling down on Mars doesn't sound like such a bad idea all of a sudden, does it? It never did. Let's go home.
You know, I just realized how much overtime Triple S is going to owe us after this trip. Maybe not. Icorn had one thing right. Triple S probably won't be very happy about all the cargo we dumped. Probably blames for the loss. Yeah, well, we'll sue them. It's their fault we're in this situation in the first place. I don't know. You may need him for a job. Mars isn't the best place to get a job right now. I don't need Triple S. It's not like I depend on a job to give me a reason for living. Oh, yeah. Chris doesn't need money. He just thinks he can float through life without a job. You're so naive, Chris. Yeah, well, I think I'm a survivor, and I've proved I'm a pretty damn good one at that. You change your tune fast, don't you? Look, let's get something straight here, okay? You may have gotten us closer to the dolphin, but if it weren't for me, you'd be in the same shape as I borrowed Janowitz right now. Yeah, well, everything's about you, isn't it? Everything's about Theta, always batting your baby blues, kissing ass to get your way. I ought to knock them both right out of your head. Ow. Shoshani confirmed the analysis. Whatever infected us must have gone into dormancy until it could mutate. Panicide no longer has any effect on it. We're gonna have to keep our temperature as low as possible, then. Yeah. I don't know if I can take being much colder. I can barely feel my fingers. Well, this would be okay for now. I'm feeling rational, you? <sighs> Did you really believe we'd kill it? I wanted to. What did we tell the dolphin? Nothing. Not for now. They wouldn't rendezvous. Mr. Shoshone, the Theta and I request your permission and cooperation to convert the hyperslick chambers to solo running. We need to remove them for transport to the Dolphin. Why can't the sleepers be awakened and travel in the lifeboats? You heard what we told the Dolphin about the space junk and the disease? Yes. The penicide didn't work. The Theta and I are sick again. We can't risk infecting the others. I understand. Please accept my sympathies. Thank you. Shoshone, we'll need you to disable life support and gravity in the crew quarters in order for us to transport the chambers to the cargo hold. Chris and I are in full bio suits. Can you do this without having to bypass your security programming? Yes, Data. On your request. Disable now, Shoshone. Life support and gravity disabled. Shoshone, release chamber number one on the count of three. One, two, three. McNeil, are the sleepers awake? Not yet. There's been a new development. The disease wasn't killed by the panicide. You're still infected? Yes. It can be suppressed, though, with cold. Our computers reduced the life support temperature throughout the ship. Be that as it may, you're not coming inside this ship. No, we're not, but the sleepers sure as hell are. I'm sorry, Captain. I don't think it's possible for us to accept them. But the sleepers have not been exposed. And we're prepared to send them to you in their chambers, not the lifeboats, so they stay unexposed. How can you transport them in the chambers? With the spear catcher. Open your lock and we'll throw them inside. Minimum impulse, three at a time. You want to throw them into our lock? That's simply not feasible. You couldn't hit such a target. He can. You can't actually be considering this. There are 18 minutes left on the hypersleep clocks. That doesn't leave much time to get all six chambers across. We have to do this now. All right. 
I strongly object. What do we have to do? How much thruster kill do we have left? 15 seconds of burn time remain. This is gonna be fun. Less than five minutes of life support remain in the hypersleep chambers. If he miscalculates trajectory or thrust, he'll puncture our hull and kill us all. Thank you, Mr. Icorn. I don't know what I'd do without you around to state the obvious. Dolphin, here come the first three chambers. Safe hands, I promise you. Get them on board and give them the analytics. We have to clear this lock. Move it! 30 seconds of life support remain in the hypersleep chambers. Come on. McNeil, the lock is clear. Luke number two. <sighs> Nothing like cutting it close. McNeil, Kaplan, the second set of sleepers is being revived now. Nice work. We're going to show you the object now. And we want you to record this demonstration. The first shift wasn't satisfied with just shutting down the video system. They crippled most of our equipment, too. We had to do a little transplanting to put on a show. And we assume this is some piece of machinery lost off some research vessel decades ago. At Byron John, it's probably thought the same thing. Knowing those two, they were probably hoping there was something on it worth a few bucks. Otherwise, it wouldn't be worth the risk of going outside to bring it in. And there it is. That's not alien. That looks like the bust of an old NASA probe or something. Maybe one of the Odysseus probes sent out at the turn of the century. I think you two have analyzed this all wrong. So let us do the talking. It looks harmless, but it seems to activate when brought in close contact with a life form. It activates? You ready? Ready for what? Showtime. noise. It might have been a communication of some kind. And look at the generator, how compact it is. You're missing the most significant thing about it, though. It only seems to activate in the presence of life. We want to deconstruct it. What? We want to deconstruct it to prove it's the source of the disease. The source of the disease? I thought it was just contaminated with something. We changed our minds. And you'll notice it doesn't have any obvious transmitting capability. We think they're afraid we could use it to track this back where it came from. Well, that's rather a leap of logic. Yeah, well, um, another leap of logic tells us that it may be booby-trapped. You may want to move out of blast range before it deconstructed. No, we insist on it. We've waited to do this until the sleepers were off the ship. We don't want them killed on your ship. Move us away an appropriate distance. We need to do this quickly. If our theory's right, the probe needs time to regenerate between activations. I knew it wasn't booby-trapped. You've totally misjudged the intent of whoever made this. <sighs> that's it. That's the bio-agent that's infected us. And that's the delivery system. 
Now who wants to discuss intent? Seems there are people out there as murderous as we are. We are not the exception. We are the rule. I'm gonna love hearing your explanation of this. It doesn't look like the Odysseus probe. It is the Odysseus probe. a deliberate attack. For what conceivable reason? Uh, anything's possible, of course. But the probe may have come into contact with the bio-agent in space. It took the disease to them, and they blame us. Rather than a first strike, this could be retaliation. Oh, that's an interesting hypothesis for future discussion, but what do we do now? There's only one thing to do. The Theta and I will put the probe, our borrow and general, his bodies, and ourselves into a lifeboat and take it into the sun. The probe cannot be destroyed. It must be dissected and analyzed piece by piece. They know where we are, but we don't know where it came from. Look, we'll take you aboard in quarantine. And the probe, we'll keep it outside our ship, in non-life. Not a good idea. Oh, he's right, it's too risky. Theta, Chris? Yes, Shoshone? I regret to inform you that in two minutes, primary fuel will be exhausted and my high level functions will cease. We're sorry, Shoshone. Please accept our sympathies. Thank you. Base level functions, including life support, will cease in less than two hours. As for transporting us in quarantine, we weren't affected by the probe. You never told us that? We caught the disease from Ibera's body, which had been exposed to space for 10 months. Which makes two things dead clear. One, it's contagious. And two, the death of its carrier doesn't kill it. It didn't penetrate the hypersleep chambers, and Shoshone couldn't find any of it alive on non-organic surfaces. But are you willing to bet all of your lives, and possibly millions more, that it can't find its way through a biosuit and into a ventilation system? What about the two chambers left inside the ship? You could go into hypersleep, and you can stay asleep until a cure is found. We thought of that. When we got into the chambers, the monitor readings went manic. It was like we didn't fit anymore. The disease may have altered the monogenetic level. The chambers probably no longer recognize their DNA. Shutting down primary systems. Why can't you tell them? We have a fuel problem of our own. We're barely going to be able to reach a habitation. There must be something we can do for you. All fuel systems are depleted. Goodbye. Number 17 should be tagged. What is the warning code for biohazard do not enter? Three red. One yellow. Okay. Do we write it out or do we end it? I think I want to be with you as long as possible.
Tomorrow at nine here on Horror, juvenile delinquents from a young offenders institution find themselves hunted in the remote countryside. Don't miss the UK TV premiere of Wilderness. Up next today, though, after some horror highlights, it's Highlander.